What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. If we are just meeting, my name is Garrett. I'm a seven figure Amazon seller showing you guys how you can make a living off Amazon as well. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a site wide sale and one of the more efficient ways to digest that information, to consume that data and use it to yield profitable opportunities for our online arbitrage business. So stay tuned and enjoy the video. So we're here sourcing on the VitaCost website. It looks like they have a 15 all food code, which grants 15% off any food and beverage on their site. Now, anytime we're trying to source a site sale like this, there's a couple things to keep in mind, and there's also a couple approaches that we can take. First and foremost, like I always say, we have to have a certain perspective when we're sourcing from sales, right? We all, we ha we all have our sort of minimum requirements which make a product good for us, right? Whether it be 15%, 10%, 12% margin, whatever your requirements are, you should have sort of like a bottom standard profit margin threshold that will kind of dictate a good buy versus a bad buy from a profitability perspective. Now, there's a caveat when we're sourcing sort of these sale sites. I mean, sort of these like sale pages, right? Because they're naturally going to get more attention, more people are going to be looking at these sorts of products, and so we have to sort of build that into our margin, right? So when we're looking at these sorts of project products, I'm not necessarily going to be okay with the same sort of minimum 12, 13, 14, 10% margin, right? Because we're expecting more exposure to these sorts of products, we have to at least one and a half or two X what our profit threshold is, right? Because we're expecting more people to join the market. We're expecting that buy box to come down a bit. So we, the products are still fine, right? But we still have to, we have to account for likely the increased supply. So I would say when we're sourcing specifically like the Nike sale or any of these sort of like site wide sales or, you know, you know, decent sales on sites, we want to bake those kind of uh, room for error and we have to, we want to build that um, the, the the boundary that that yields a still a good profit margin All right so there's two approaches that we can take either obviously we can go one by one map them back to Amazon and see where the profitability is but keep a product finder kind of yields a more efficient approach right keep a keep a product finder is going to act as an entry point to learn a lot about some of these products and so we see in these brand in this brand breakdown right there's frontier some of the big big brands that they have in this category right so we see frontier super simple truth organic bobs red mill private selection etc cetera, etc cetera. right so we'll use some of these big brands as an entry point to find sellers who are doing a lot of sourcing on by the cost and use that as an entry point, right? Because it's always going to be easier to map Amazon products back to Amazon or back to the supplier as opposed to always trying to map a product on a site to Amazon, right? Because the qualification is going to take a lot longer, right? There's no sort of disqualifying factors when we're simply just looking at these products on the site for what it's worth, right? We don't know velocity, we don't know competition, we don't know buy box, et cetera. However, if we can start with looking at these sorts of products that we know are on VitaCost on Amazon, we can make that qualification a lot quicker, right? We immediately know the competition. We immediately know the velocity. We immediately know the stability in the buy box and all these things. And so when we identify a product market that's ideal, that's, that's conducive to what we're looking for, then we're just mapping it back to, um, to VitaCost. Keep in mind that we have this 15% off sale in our back pocket. All right, so we're going to use a couple of these big brands as our entry point. So if we're going to keep a product finder, we can go down to our brand uh, filter and start to um, um, account for some of those brands, right? So we saw Frontier in there. We're going to use Simple Truth Organic as well. Truth Organic. And we're using these to pay quick commercial break. I appreciate you guys supporting and following the channel. If you are enjoying this particular video, which I'm assuming you are if you're still watching it to this point, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Scroll down, hit that subscribe button. Helps me out, helps the channel out. Let's get back to the content. Try and get a big enough sample size, right? Obviously, we can go down and use all sorts of smaller brands, but it's not going to be that worth our time because Bob's Red Mill. Bob's Red Mill. 
because they're just not going to re- yield that many products. And I know Vitacost also has a brand. Vitacost. No, we want Vitacost. So we'll start here, right? We have 8,100 8, products. We're also going to, because we're identify, we're trying to find food products, we're going to narrow it down to the grocery catalog. And so we can do that by the all the categories here. We can do grocery and gourmet. And so that brings us 6,000 products. We're also going to set a sales rank filter of a max of 50,000. We're going to eliminate Amazon here. And we're also going to eliminate Amazon from the longevity of our market, right? So Amazon 90 day out of stock, we're going to set that minimum of 80%. And so we're left with 600 products that um, we can qualify pretty quickly, right? So as we kind of scroll down here, we can see on the bottom right what that keeper graph is looking like. And so our goal here is to first and foremost qualify based on a keeper keep graph that we're looking for. Right, we can see a we can get a perception of the stability of the particular market. We can obviously get a perception of of whether it's trending up or down and what the buy box is looking like. So this is a decent looking keeper graph, right? If we consider this as our market, offers are trending down. We have a buy box in between, call it fifteen and twenty. That would be where our price point would be. And then obviously we can see a pretty good diversification in our buy box. Now we have an idea of where the supply is. We're hoping we can find this product in VitaCost using our 15% off code. And so that's ultimately going to be our last step. Um, it looks like actually, so 54 ounce, that's 32. But um, let's see if they have different sizes here. Two sizes. So this is actually maybe where we're looking for, oh, 32. And so now we're only left with trying to find the right size. It looks like uh, they don't have the 54 ounce, but this is the strategy, right? And so we start with a warmer sample size, keeping in mind the results from our Keep Product Finder search, and we're just going to continue to map back and forth um, until we can kind of identify potential opportunities where we can um, profit. Now, once we find a good product that we're interested in, say, obviously this, this bed's red mill, steel cut, et cetera, is not on VitaCost, but say I think this 24 ounce was, because we found a match, no, no I guess not 16. Once we find a match, we can dig deeper and, and see where else that takes us, right? And so say we found the 16 or the 32 right here, We've identified that there's a correlation between our result and the source. We can then start to um, dig into the certain sellers in the buy box, in the mix, priced competitively. Because the thought is they are probably buying, there's a chance that they're buying from VitaCost. And so we want to be able to leverage their work to see where else we can find profit, right? We want to be able to look into all the other products that were that they are selling to see where else we can map it back to our vital cost sale and potentially find more products that are profitable, right? Because looking through, and we'll kind of do a, a quick little demo right here. Looking through a, we use seller app. Looking through a storefront is always, always, always going to be quicker than looking at the source, right? Because we've identified that there's 39 Bob's Red Mill products, and we can make the qualification using our small keeper graph here and continue to map it back, right? In this case, obviously, we want to account for the 15% off sale. But even if it wasn't using that sale, regarding that sale, the qualification, the connection happens far, far quicker doing it this way, starting with the source, um, and mapping it back to the, the site. And th in this case, Keep a Product Finder is just a lens in which we're using to um, create a more efficient way to find products, to analyze products, to qualify products, and map them back to the source as quickly, as efficiently, as um, accurately as possible. That's going to be it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, give the video a like, share it to a friend, and we will see you in the next one.